So the journey to my diagnosis um, is very lengthy. My first swelling that I remember was when I was about eight years old. And at the time, it was assumed that I had gotten a bug bite on my foot. Um, I don't have any family history of HAE or these swelling episodes. For the, so for the next 15 years, I was in and out of doctor's offices, hospitals, and with increased swelling throughout my teenage years. And after several visits with no physical reason for my swelling, um, it was determined that I had depression and was actually admitted to a psychiatric hospital because there was nothing physically wrong with me that doctors could find. Rather, I was not dealing with life events. Of course, this led me to hiding from my family whenever I was sick or ignoring my symptoms and at times just um, pretending that I, I wasn't sick and that nothing was wrong with me. A random visit to an ER, the same hospital that I had been to a hundred times or more for facial swelling, stomach, hands, feet, whatever, um, resulted with a, a young resident saying he knew what I had and of course I was skeptical and said, just give me something for my pain and my nausea, which is what I've been doing for years. Um, and a week later, the actual, the same resident gave me a call and said, you have hereditary angioedema. So now I knew what was wrong with me and it wasn't all in my head, but still there were no treatments available. Two years after my actual diagnosis, I was sent to the NIH to be treated by Dr. Frank. And because I'd had an increase in my throat swellings and after about the fifth intubation, it was determined that a tracheostomy was really the best option for me um, because it's so dangerous to have those throat swelling. So now I had a diagnosis, but I felt like I was sicker. Like I felt like no hope at that point. Nothing was working to help my swelling. And while I didn't enjoy having a trach for those 16 years, I was able to finish school, I worked as a nurse, kind of part-time, full-time at times, and I was able to be involved with my family. Although I was still in the hospital one to two weeks a month with severe abdominal swelling and dehydration. You know, as far as the treatment impact that has had on me, the, the newer medications, my life changed when the first C1 therapy became available. It was approved in the US. Not only was I able to have my tracheostomy reversed, I was able to work full time as a nurse and be there for my family, be there for my son. For the first time in 26 years, I was able to travel with my family since I didn't have to stay close to a hospital that knew me and knew how to treat me. Additionally, I was able to fulfill a, a lifetime goal of mine, giving back to others, being able to provide free medical clinics in several underserved communities, not just locally where I live, but also I've been able to go to Haiti and Africa. And, and the newer treatment options continue to improve my quality of life by giving me the freedom to treat and know that I am um, healthy wherever I am.